Today on Cruise Man's Garage, we're going to be installing this Show Chrome Accessories Smart Mount Backrest onto this 2018 Honda Goldwing Tour. Now, this backrest will fit any 2018 or later Goldwing Tour. Let's start by seeing what comes in the Smart Mount Backrest Kit. Now, this Smart Mount Backrest does come in a couple of different varieties, so I'll put links in the description of this video where you can get more information. The first thing we have is this nice carrying bag, and inside you find the padded backrest. The backrest is quite soft, and on the back you'll notice there are three snaps and that will be for a little storage pouch we'll talk about later. Here of course is that storage pouch which will attach to those snaps. There is one pretty large and heavy duty mounting bracket. This will go under the seat and then we have a lot of mounting hardware in a bag and there's a second smaller bag with some additional hardware You'll notice that all of the pieces have a very quality feel, they're very heavy duty, and they're all nicely powder coated. The kit also comes with some very detailed and well written instructions with pictures. Now I recommend that you read these instructions carefully. I'm going to deviate slightly from the order in which they do things on the instruction sheet, but I follow all the same procedures. Here I've laid out all of the installation hardware on my tabletop and this is a good idea because it lets you easily find all the different parts you're going to need for the installation. Also don't be too concerned if there are additional screws or nuts or washers left over because this is a universal hardware kit that's used for other products as well so you may have a couple of things left over at the end. Even though we don't show the use of Threadlocker in this video, Show Chrome does recommend using a medium strength blue Threadlocker on all fasteners. We're going to start with step 7 on the instruction sheet by installing the two screws into the base mount. Now these are the M8 16 millimeter long threaded screws that go into these holes in the base mount. Now's a good time to remind you that if you're enjoying this video and you like videos like this, please click the subscribe button down below and don't forget that notification bell. Let's install the jam nut on each of these screws and tighten it down. There's two of those jam nuts available and make sure you have the screws and the nuts oriented correctly as shown in this video. Before we tighten everything down, we need to make sure that the slot in this riser will slip down in between the head of those screws and the base mount. So you may have to back off those screws a little bit, maybe loosen the nuts and unscrew those screws until this slot will fit down in there and it needs to be a snug fit. It doesn't, you don't want it too tight because you want to be able to remove it. You can leave that riser in place as you tighten down these jam nuts using a Allen wrench and holding an open end wrench on the nut. You're basically wanting to tighten those jam nuts down and just check periodically to make sure you can still remove that riser. In the next step, we need to attach this rubber strip to the bottom of the base mount as shown here. Now before I peel off this backing, I'm going to clean the surface really well with some rubbing alcohol just to make sure we get good adhesion. I mentioned previously that I'm kind of jumping around a little bit. I'm not doing things in the same order as the instructions show. And we're going to mount this adjustment plate to the riser shown here. You can always refer to figure 10 on the instruction sheet for more information, but we're going to basically start by placing a lock washer onto one of these M6 by 18 millimeter long screws, and then we're going to put a flat washer after the lock washer. Now we can install those screws through the riser into the threads on the adjustment plate as shown. 
Use an Allen wrench to tighten these down firmly. Next, we're going to install this small bracket to the back of the seat pad. You can see a couple of small holes punched into the back, and this will line up with this bracket. Now, to do this, we're going to use the two smallest black screws that come in the kit. You can see those here. And it's actually a three millimeter Allen wrench that I'm going to use to uh, insert those screws through that backrest and you'll find the threads and then just tighten this down. Next we're going to install this small hinge adjustable bracket to the bracket we just installed on the backrest pad. Now to do this we're going to need a couple of parts. We're going to need the bracket itself but also a one quarter inch by two and three quarter inch bolt. There are two long bolts included in the kit and this is the shorter of the two. The reason I point out the difference in those long bolts is because I'm actually using the incorrect bolt. I'm using the longer of the two, but it's not a problem. Later on in the installation, I'll have to remove this and use the shorter of the two bolts. So I thought I'd go ahead and point out up front that it is the shorter bolt that goes in this area. Now we can attach the bottom bracket to the top bracket we just installed. And you can see here it's adjustable. You can put it in a variety of positions. I'm just going to go ahead and put it in two of the slots for now. We can always come back later and adjust it. Now you'll notice that I'm using a couple of small copper washers underneath these bolts. That is unnecessary. That is not part of the installation. I was doing it to actually test out these washers. So you can ignore those washers. You do not need to use any washers under these two bolts. Now we can install the riser onto that bottom bracket using this one quarter by three inch bolt and lock nut. And this is the point I discovered I'd used the wrong bolt up above in the upper bracket. So I will remove that bolt, replace it with the correct shorter bolt, and use the longer bolt to attach the riser to the bottom bracket. Now I'm going to go ahead and modestly tighten these. I'm not going to fully tighten them yet. Now I'm going to go all the way back to step one and begin by opening both saddlebag doors and then carefully remove the side covers so that you can get access to the seat bolt. Using a six millimeter Allen wrench, Remove the two bolts on either side of the seat. They're located toward the front in between the frame and the seat. Next, make sure you've disconnected the heated seat plug as shown here. And then, beginning at the front of the seat, begin to lift up and remove the seat as shown. And then turn the seat upside down so that we can begin working on it. Locate the seat plug tab shown here and go ahead and remove it. And once you've lifted up on that tab, you can uh, turn the seat over and just pull that little plug out. Locate the four slots on the underside of the seat. This is the location where the T-nuts are going to be placed and eventually will hold the base mount in place. So insert those little T-nuts by slipping them in as shown here and do this for all four of the T-nuts. Go ahead and prepare the four M6 by 20 millimeter screws by placing the flat washers on each one. Now we're ready to install the base mount using those four screws and they will screw into those T-nuts you installed in the previous step. Use an Allen wrench to tighten all four of these screws. Now you're ready to reinstall the seat on the motorcycle. Make sure you've slipped under those two little tabs in the frame and make sure the plug is not in a bind. Pull it down so that it's uh, underneath that frame rail as you can see. 
That way it will allow the seat to go on correctly. Now we're going to thoroughly clean the area of the seat around the opening where that plug was before using rubbing alcohol. Now we're ready to attach the backrest plug cover. You'll notice these two adhesive strips. I've already removed the protective plastic covering these and that is going to attach to the vinyl of the seat making sure it's aligned correctly. You can see those two little plastic strips there I removed and now we're just going to press this into place carefully but firmly and it is on Velcro so you can peel it up if you ever needed to. Now you simply slip the backrest riser down into place so that it fits on those two screw heads underneath and you've successfully installed the rider backrest. And as you can see here, it's going to provide a really comfortable ride. You can also notice how the whole unit flips forward to make it easier to get on or off the motorcycle or for a passenger to get on or off the motorcycle. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to click the like button. 